the self mile fascial release for the lats. We're gonna have a look at how we can start to improve some range of movement. If we're gonna get into these overhead positions, we've got to free up the shoulder and the lats so that we can get into a nice straight alignment. If the lats tight, glued down and restricting shoulder range of movement and we're finding it difficult to get into overhead positions, we're gonna find that the brain is gonna make a compensation by arching the back. And that's not gonna help us with our balance position or to create a really stay, safe and stable handstand position. So we're gonna start off, we've got the ball, we've also got the foam roller, you can use both and we're gonna give you a little bit of an intro into those two different methods. So Jacko's gonna take the, which one do you want to use first Jacko? Oh, ball. ball first. So he's gonna take the ball and he's just gonna lie onto his side. So the ball then just drops in behind the shoulder. The advantage of using the ball is that we can get into a little bit more specific areas, put some more direct pressure on, especially around the high point on the back of the shoulder in that posterior musculature around the shoulder. Anything tight, nasty, grisly, feels stuck down, those are the trigger points that we're aiming for. Just put some pressure onto it, gently start to loosen it off and just by gentle pressure waves over the top and just relax and sink into it. Level one was the hand still, level two you can then start to create a bit of movement and this is just creating some more range into those rotation positions, starting to free up any restrictions. If you wanted to, you can then grab the foam roll, swap it over. This one's just a little bit of a, a slightly larger object, so you less pressure on, a down, on the specific points, but it does help in starting to get in some of that bigger musculature a little bit further down the rib cage. A minute or two on this one, relax, don't fight it, sink into the foam roller and just allow yourself to start to free up and get rid of some of the restrictions that are gonna cause uh, um, range of movement to be compromised. This mobilization exercise is gonna let us put some length into this lat. And what's really great about it is we get to work through the whole range. So we're gonna be able to feel something going on at the hip as well as right up on the shoulder. And it's really important we've got the connection between the two to get this shape nailed down for the human flag. So Tim's got a resistance band just looped through. He's gonna stick his hand through. It goes onto the wrist and then he's able to just loosely grab it with his hand and the band actually pulls on the wrist. And that's just gonna, when he cranks some tension up onto it as he sits back, just provide a little bit of distraction at the joints, just opening up the shoulder joint itself. He's then gonna sit back and he's gonna explore some ranges. And one of the things we want him to, to focus on with this is one thing trying to get into external rotation. So rather than the hand being down, he's gonna look and get in the thumb to go up because that external rotation is gonna put the lat on a bigger stretch. The other thing whilst he's exploring is there, you see the hump that he's making through his back here. Rather than staying in neutral spine to create the, the most amount of stretch happening at the lap, we want to hump this up. It's because we're trying to take the two attachment, uh, or the two sites where it, it attaches, uh, down at the pelvis and at the shoulder as far apart as possible. So he's tucking the bum underneath, you can see that shape there. He's gonna really feel the stretch on the lower part of the lap there, and then he's gonna be able to mobilize all the way up into the back of the shoulder. He's gonna hang out here for 30 seconds, just exploring where it's tied for him he's going to feel amazing when he comes out of it. For the handstand, it's really important that we can create this very good overhead position. We've done some work on the thoracic spine, we've done some work on loosening the lat, but one we haven't touched on yet is the effect of the tricep on this. And this exercise is going to combine that lat, tricep and thoracic spine all together in one move. So it's a three in one combo. We love those, don't we Tim? So hand goes into the band. The band is just going to help encourage the position a little bit more. So he goes around and wraps it and then takes the hand behind the body. As you see, he gets into that position. We're starting to then take the tricep onto um, a greater length. We've got the, this nice overhead position. We're not worrying about the rest of the arm being straight because we're trying to target this tricep a little bit. We've got this, you can see, literally see Tim Scapula is moved nicely around the rib cage there and he's keeping his rib cage locked down. So we're getting some thoracic spine extension, but the rest of the body is nicely in line. So he's even working on some trunk alignment. Core's tight, bum's locked on. What he can then do is a little bit of exploring inside that position, but he can also do a nice little bit of like contract relax, which is where he's got the band there, so he can pull slightly against it for five or six seconds and then relax and let it go a little bit further. But when you do relax to let that go, in terms of the elbow going backwards, don't just let the whole shape lose altogether. So Tim, if he did a bad one, he'd be pulling against them, he relaxes, he lets the whole body go and you can see that movement coming from here rather than at the shoulder. So he's locking everything else in tight. He's got that scapula move nice around the ribcage. When he relaxes, tricep goes, releases off along with that lat, and then we can start to see a better alignment here from elbow, uh, shoulder, down to the spine. If we can get a nice straight line there, the chances are when you go into your handstands, you're gonna create a much better straighter position, which is gonna make your handstand easier and also more beautiful. 
those of us that have been paying attention and diligently doing their movement preparation will be starting to create a better range at the shoulder, but it doesn't stop there. We need to make sure that the shoulder is strong and stable here. And it's at this end range where it's really difficult to create strength because of the compromised position of the shoulder. So we must do some work in the, to finish our preparation to create stability around the shoulder there. So this exercise is going to allow him to do that. He's got his uh, sternum just on the edge of the box. This could be a bench, anything that you can come off the side of, where his hand, he's got enough clearance, so his hand is straight uh, vertical down to the floor, and it's just touching the edge of the box there. That's his start position. He grabs the pole, he tries to, imagine he's trying to snap the pole apart. What's that doing? It's just creating a little bit of external rotation of the shoulder. And then from there, his job is to try and raise up into a sort of Y position with his arms as high as he can. When he gets a pause, and what we want to try and do with a three second pause is squeeze it to get a little bit higher if he can for that end range. It's that end range that we're trying to create. What he doesn't want to happen is as he starts to go up, is to lose that shape in his back. So what he's making sure is locking his rib cage down, his glutes on, so we've got all that nice alignment here. So the movement comes from the shoulder. He pauses three seconds and he, and he tries to squeeze as high as he can at the top of there, because we're doing reps of these. But that pause at the top and trying to squeeze an extra little bit is where the gold in this exercise is made. Once you start to get good at this, and it's not something to do right for everyone at the start, because you're going to find these are hard, even with no weight on that pole whatsoever, is you can add a little biscuit, a little 1.25. And it's just going to make that end range strength even a little harder. And Tim's got great range there. He's keeping that alignment nicely. Pause for a few seconds, squeezing at the top. You put a bank of 10 of those in the, in the locker, then you're going to be creating good range at the shoulder, stability there, and starting to get strong at that end position where we're most challenged in our handstand.